from the Renault Show. I'm kicking off a huge backyard deck transformation with Trex. I have a one pan brekkie recipe you're going to love on your next early morning at the Renault site. Patricia Lohan is back to discuss feng shui for your living room and I reveal a glamorous filing cabinet DIY. like these ones I tell you in Australia our climate canes our timber decking whether it's soft or hardwood over time the actual boards bearers joists everything it gets wet it warps it rots it twists it pops my gosh that even rhymed and I tell you that means for you that your overall decks end up needing a lot of maintenance over time there's sanding there's staining there's even relaying boards if you're having trouble with a lot of your boards popping up and this means for you instead of relaxing and chilling out and having a fun time with your family your friends and enjoying your outdoor spaces it means maintenance it means every single season you're having to do work to keep your outdoor spaces looking exactly as you want them safe and in good working order if you are in this position as I am right now, I have the perfect solution for you in this project. If this sounds like you and you are after something really low maintenance, then you need to check out the Trex Decking Solutions. Trex is a composite deck. It can be used over the top of your existing subframe. And when you combine it with other clever products Trex have, such as Trex Protect Tape, the Hideaway Fastening System, and spraying your existing subframe with a termite resistant treatment, you can put yourself in the best position to have a beautiful looking deck that is long lasting, eco-friendly, and low maintenance. Composite decking is what's called in the industry wood plastic. It's actually a combination of recycled timbers and plastic. In fact, Trex invented it 25 years ago. Now these composite timbers are, well the Trex one is extremely eco-friendly. It's actually quite an innovative makeup. It has 95% recycled timbers and plastic inside of it. And the best part of it is it is so durable. It doesn't warp, it doesn't scratch, it doesn't bend, it doesn't stain. So it's absolutely ideal for those of you who love enjoying their outdoors and not spending all your time maintaining them. Whether this is for your own home for you to enjoy, whether you're renting out the property or you just want to add immense value to your home, or it could be because you have kids and soccer boots and pets and pools, or it could just be because you want to keep the harsh Aussie climate at bay, then this is a product you should really look into. Thanks to its three-sided, technologically superior shell protection that means that the Trex Transcend will actually keep its color and its luxurious finish for years to come. It's actually backed by a 25 year limited fade and stain warranty. So that means years and years on after you've had decades of enjoying your deck it'll still be looking this great. It does come in an absolutely amazing range of colours, things you might never have thought of, which can make your home look absolutely phenomenal, especially outdoor entertaining areas. It's the perfect accompaniment. But one of the things I love most about the Trex Transcend and the products is how eco-friendly they are. So check out these eco-fun facts. Now, as I mentioned, the entire high performance Trex portfolio is actually made up of 95% recycled timbers. And here is the proof. The company reclaims and repurposes 180 million tons of plastic and wood scrap that would otherwise go into landfill each and every year. 
and I love this one. By using the industrial sawdust, Trex have never ever fell a tree to make their decking boards. Now that is special. The plastic that Trex bring in to use in their boards, it's everything that we use in our daily lives. It's the plastic from around our toilet paper wrappers, our paper towel, our sandwich bags, you name it. And in fact, in one 4.9 meter board, one board, there is over 2,250 recycled plastic bags. It is madness. And to top it all off, the Trex production process. So the way they manufacture their boards is as green as their product. In the sense that any runoff or any refuse from the production is actually recycled straight back into the plant. How does it get better than that? If you're looking to remove your decking boards without damaging your subframe, then leave the sledgehammer at home. Instead, cut between your joists at around 1200 lengths and then use a simple jimmy bar to lever those boards off. Hey, Jono, what's the secret to getting these off the hangers? Knock them off. <laughs> Brute force? Yeah, pretty much. And meat pie for brekkie? Yes, meat pie and a mother. <laughs> it's now time to get up some of this subframe, as there were some parts of this 12 year old subframe that were never going to last the test of time and were showing serious signs of age and wear. But now that that's all gone, it gives us a chance to check the drainage, any evidence of pests, and to clean up and level out. It is like a spring clean and a great setup for an amazing new deck to come on in. Keeping our decks amazing and safe, what are some of the things that you need to think about to make sure these decks are amazing forever? Trex Protect can ensure the life of your deck by safeguarding against moisture and rot with Trex's innovative new self-adhesive butyl tape. Now Trex Protect joist and beam tape, it's self-adhesive butyl tape and it's designed to protect the wooden joist and beams from moisture that can lead to rot and the loosening of the deck screws and fasteners. Trex Protect effectively shields the top of the joists, the rim joists, the ledger boards, and the beams from moisture that can lead to the development of rot and wood decay. It also acts as a barrier between wood and galvanized metal that's commonly used in the construction hardware, such as your joist hangers. Additionally, it seals the deck fasteners and helps deck screws hold longer and stronger by preventing moisture penetration. Now when you're about to lay a deck, there is a pile of things to think about. I naturally think about how I connect, can connect the outside to the inside, what amazing lighting I can put in, whether I want stairs or platforms leading down to the rest of the yard. However, there is a business end of things. And I have Jono with me today to talk about all the things that are below the amazing decking boards. Because there's a pile of things to think about, right? When we're laying a Trek step. Yep. What's the first thing? If I want to try and keep my subframe, my old subframe, what do I need to think about? Uh, there's a few things, like uh, I would probably look at getting a chippy or a builder in, yep. come look at the uh, subframe to see if it's sound, it's strong, structurally fine to take the weight of the new boards. Yes. Uh, Trex boards are quite heavy compared okay. to other decking products, yep. um, so that's a good thing to get checked out. Uh, also your joists, uh, you want to have a look and see if they're alright, you know, if they're level, flush, all that kind of stuff. And there is um, a good Trex Protect from Trex that we could lay over the top of it to give it a, the joist longevity um, in a way as well to stop uh, the holes in the joist filling up with water. So what you're saying is, first of all, even if my deck looks great, my substructure could be all screwed up. True, yeah, 100%. Okay, yeah. so I know in this circumstance, I'm like, my substructure's great, Jono, it doesn't need anything. <laughs> and we have been able to keep quite a bit of it, yeah. but there was a section over there that was absolutely trashed. Yeah, it had moisture and it probably had three years left in it. Mm. But there were, no, it, yeah. there were very few signs up on, up on, up on top. Mm. So number one would be to get a chippy or someone in to lift up some existing boards yep. and check that not only is it not 
rotten, there's no termites, it's not starting to damp up, mm. but also that you have enough structural support to hold up the weight. So yeah, correct, to hold up the weight of these boards that are quite heavy. Um, there is a way if uh, the builder or carpenter comes in and has a look at it, uh, we could put some solid blocks through the decking, yep. uh, through the joist, sorry, uh, that could structurally uh, make the subframe stronger. Yes. Uh, and that is one good thing, or potentially replacing the joist with a bigger joist. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's another way. Do you know another thing that I noticed though, as you're bringing up all of the beautiful, I must admit, Trex decking that's coming in the Trex Transcend, is it's all very straight. Yes, very straight, yes. And so I'm assuming when you mentioned that everything is in alignment with the subframe, you meant that, you know, your bearers and your joists over time haven't warped or moved because yeah. if you're putting a straight board onto a wobbly frame, yeah, it could be a recipe for disaster. Yeah, and then it all goes downhill from there. You know, you're getting a beautiful product with a massive warranty of 25 years, yep. and then you've got a uh, you've got a subframe underneath that's going to only last another five years. What's the point? You know? That is such a good point. So if you're going to put in a Rolls Royce, mm -hmm. make sure you're not putting it on top of a, a Mini Cooper S. Golf buggy. A golf buggy. <laughs> oh, I like it. All right, so we're gonna check it's not rotting, we're gonna check it's structurally sound, check yep. it can keep the weight, check it's straight. Yep. And if all of those things check out, there's no reason why you can't use your Trekking Transcend on top of your existing frame. 100%, no reason at all. That's fantastic. Jono, what am I gonna do with Seriously? All good, chill out, we've got it covered. All right, what's happening? So what we'll do is we'll set a square edge board, um, nice and straight, then we'll put our um, beautiful connector clips in here like okay. this. So a connector clip? Yep. And that, that's got a groove in yeah, it. Yeah, it's a nice little groove along here. Uh, there's two different sorts of boards. One's has a square edge, yes. and one has a, uh, a groove through it. Yeah. So we can slide these in. So we literally sit yep. the little wing nut thing. Yep. We sit that in the groove. Sit that in the groove. On top of the of joist. the joist, yes. Right. And then we'll push the next one into it, and then so on and so, so on and like so on. So it's like a sandwich. Yep. We literally sandwich all these in together. Yep, and then a good thing to remember always is, is if you can get um, a decking clamp, We'll deck and clamp, pull yep. them together nice and tight, and then we'll fix these down so there's no difference uh, in the gaps. So you'll basically set yourself a straight run yep. to start with, and then you'll lay like big runs, like yep. five of these together with yeah, these little five clips. Boards, yeah, 100%. Clamp them up. Clamp them together, and go through with an impact gun and drive them all in. So I'd like to say it's as simple as then driving these all in. Yep. And time will tell yes. when, when it's my we'll turn. See. <laughs> we'll see how simple I make it. Yeah. All right, well that, that actually does seem pretty cool. Once that board's set, it is literally like set, pin, yeah, and drive it home. Go. Now does that mean that I don't have fixes through my boards? Yes, so you uh, have no face fixings on it at all. Uh, you may have some at the start and the end, yes. which you will have to fix. But in the, the main end, part, the main of the part no so no popping screws, getting caught on kids' shoes Nothing. or toes. Like that. Yep. That's amazing. Mm. Really good product. All right, Jono, you have showed me how to fix these, and I'm nearly ready to go when it's all easy and simple. Mm -hmm. But what happens if I have a join? Like, what what happens here? How is this going to work? <laughs> so. What they recommend to do is put two blocks either side. Okay, so we fatten it up. Yeah, so basically you've got this end of the decking supporting on a block here and a block here. Yep. And, and then, then what will happen go? is we'll put this on this side here. Yeah. This will go into here instead yes. of on this joist. Okay, so yes. the fastening system actually yep. goes into the blocked out area. Yes, 100%, now, on either side of the joint. I hear rumours, just like with every product that has natural material in it, that we have expansion and contraction yes, to think correct. about. Yep. So what's the recommended gap between well, those? Uh, I would start off at about three mil, okay. um, and it obviously does depend when you lay the deck, you know, 100%. if it's a hot day or a cold day, yep. but I would probably start off with three mil. So does it need to be three mil precisely in expansion gap? No, it can be three to four mil, you know, okay. give or take. Um, a good gauge we go by. I was gonna say, do I have to measure no, it? No, you don't. Uh, <laughs> a simple packer, you can pick them up at local supplier anywhere, yep. any home hardware. And um, what we do is put it in the center like that, and then you just butt that up nicely like and that. And then we have our blockers, yep, and we 100%. have our fixing system in here. Yep, and one thing you do need to remember yep. is obviously have these both square cuts. There's nothing worse than having what, trying to match these up? 100%. <laughs> now, 
I must admit, Jono, I am suitably impressed by the Trex Hideaway hidden fastening system. And I think there's a whole world that everyone could learn about it. So I did do a bit of Googling and not that you need it. No, yes. But if anyone else wants to learn more about the planning, the preparation, or the installation using this system, they can head to au.trex.com and there are a pile of resources on there for you. But in the meantime, enough talk for me, Jono. Let's, Let's get, get cracking. I think there was a drill that was polished over there. Yes, Has my name on it. Yeah. <laughs> In this project, we're actually using two types of fastening systems. The hidden fastening system that you just saw, as well as one that is custom made and specifically designed to be used with the Trex Transcend system. It is called Clever Clip. This linear clipping system is fastened to the tops of the joists with some nails. I prefer the nail gun. And then an adhesive is used to help set in those beautiful Trex boards. Check out next week's episode for the final reveal. I can't wait to show you guys how amazing it looks. It's super important when you're renovating to stay healthy and well, to make sure you are a powerhouse all the way through. And one way of doing that is eating well. So today is all about showing you how you can make amazing, healthy, nutritious, easy meals with one gas burner and one pot. So the ingredients for today's recipe is olive oil, mushrooms, a handful of thyme, four eggs, some avocado, lemon, some raw baby spinach, salt and pepper, some yummy sourdough, and if you love it hot, some hot chili sauce. Starting from the top, we need to heat a small fry pan and we need to put the olive oil in it over a medium heat and pop the mushroom and thyme in there. But the mushrooms do need to be sliced, so let's get to it. These are coming along nice and golden. Now it's telling me I need to take my eggs and I need to crack them one by one into the fry pan. Now I do believe that the fry pan I've chosen to use here is a little big for it. Um, I think it would be better a little smaller to medium. This is probably a medium to large. So I might need to pop a couple more eggs in there. As you can tell by watching my cooking skills, there is nothing chef-like about me. Oh, that does look good though. All right, let's get on to mashing up that avocado. Now inside this smashed avocado, they want me to pop half of the ju uh, juice of half of a lemon and season with salt and pepper. Okay, they're coming along nicely. Look. Yay! It's actually quite colourful. I like my eggs really running, really running. I'm just going to dish half of this up. I couldn't possibly eat the whole thing. And as I said, for me, it doesn't matter how it comes out. Oh yeah. We've got eggs, we've got a bit of barbecue char, we've got some thyme. I'm going to serve it up with a big dollop of this smashed abo on top. All right. Mwah. So there we have it. Sourdough, one pan brekkie, eggs, thyme, mushrooms, avocado, lemon, some spinach to top it off. I think I might tuck in. That's really good. It might not look like my best production. But that's really tasty. I could definitely have that before I got on site, on site, or for dinner. 
Hey guys, I'd love you to welcome back Patricia from patricialohan.com, our feng shui expert on the Reno show. And today we're going to be talking about living rooms. Living rooms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of where for me, it's the chill zone, like mm -hmm. where when the day's unwound and we've cleaned up in the kitchen, we retire and we yeah. connect. We usually connect with each other in our mm -hmm. living rooms. So one of the big things which you have done so well here in your Thanks. living room is a beautiful round um, coffee table. What's your theory on round things? I think oh, every I'm space needs a round. The round. round. I'm all about really? the soft corners and the round because wow. the round. It's like it is really that sense of flow and yep. um, really good for communication. Really good for like coming around a table. You know, it's that sense. Yeah, it's of, like, like inviting. inviting isn't it's it? very very inviting. So that's a really good one to think about just in terms of your space. Have a nice round coffee table, um, nice. or even your side. Use the side tables that are nice around, and it's that sense of just like comfort and connection. I love um, Okay. And then, really, when it comes to living rooms, you really can go w whatever direction you want with it. Okay. As in, you just talked about you want it to be a place for chilling, for connection, yeah, yeah, for yeah, being yeah, together. Um, so, colors wise, you want to make sure that you're not going like too vibrant on like okay. the red or bright orange. bright orange. Or so that's again too much fire energy. You want to just like okay. keep things calm. Um, and that's one of the things when I came in here, I was like, I can feel a sense of calmness because those colors are very grounding and very um, supportive of that like you know of your intention um in your living room again you have like loads of plants and plants are great i'm a plant addict plants are such there. good feng shui because they are like why living. is that first of all they're exchanging the oxygen so they're like bringing yeah, so they're oxygen. good for us they're good for us number one number two you are bringing things that represent growth and vibrancy and um and just like living other living beings basically into your space so they're so sharing, really vibration, they're sharing, sharing the vibration sharing vibration and improving energy. it like really really improving and absorbing the Is that why I fondle my plants? Honestly, you can be talking to them, become friends with your plants. Well, I did name, I named my fiddle leaf. His name's Jono. <laughs> Apparently you need to name your fiddle leaves to keep them alive. Oh, there you go. And you there become you friends with it. And the thing is, like a lot of times people can be, you know, oh, I'll just get like an artificial plant. I can't keep plants alive. And they're dead energy. So essentially, literally, and, literally dead energy. And the thing is, you'll have it left in this place. Um, and we're all about making things flow. Plants are moving, even if we can't see them like move like this. Well, but this one growing. literally is. They it moves growing, like I open you know? the door and it moves and grows. Mm -hmm. And so, so if you were to say you're not a green thumb yeah um so I, i'm a massive fan like people that have flowers in their yeah. house i'm like buy a plant it will actually cost less than the flowers and even if you're not a green thumb it will last like at a minimum five six weeks yeah for sure and and but there's then that moment of when you're not a green thumb and it's maybe mm -hmm. dead Important to remove from your space. Definitely important to remove okay. from your space. Remove I'll stop your touching you now. It. It's all good. Um, so in terms of plants, we're really big fans of like the money plant, the jade plant, because it's yes. thick and it's a succulent and it's really nice. Um, and it like represents money because it holds onto the liquid a lot. So it's like quite yes. juicy. Is that the same for all succulents? Is that um, a... All succulents except cactuses. So we okay, spikes. spiky, spiky ones we don't want because spiky. And They're it, a bit trendy right now. They are a bit trendy, and I am like not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> basically so if I had to say to a few people you can't hear that cactus and just think about it in your living room you're talking you want to attract a cum communication a yep. friend love and joy and yes, connection yes. together and then you have this plant in the middle that's like spiky like that's and everyone really gonna and, push the energy people away are drawn to it too they do and then they, they start they, are in, they insist on touching it yeah. Okay, cool. So, not a fan of those. Um, and then artificial ones, it, the, the energy just gets stuck in that area. So, it starts okay. connecting dust, basically. And that's a really another thing when it comes to like ornaments and things that you're just like, it, they just become dust collectors. So a bit like doilies. Yes. Did you grow up? Did your mum have doilies oh God, in Ireland? Doilies, so many doilies. And like, <laughs> my, mom had my mom still has ones that she puts on the side of the couch that oh, were like my grandmother's. Wow. And it's so sweet with her my grandmother's, but she's like a leather couch and they keep falling. So every time you sit, it they fall. Sleep. And then you end up with the bug again. And I'm like, this is just a really useless exercise. <laughs> Okay, so round features. Round features. Living features. Living features. What about light? Lighting. Really light. Um, I really love the idea that you can like change your lighting at different times. Yeah. So um, during the day, it's totally cool to have it bright and open, but then in the evening time, you want to like tone it down, so have some nice lamps. Soft and So low. you're softening it. So 
that's really, really cool into that downtime. You technically crossed completely over being yeah. into interior designer in that it's about levels of light mm -hmm. and control of yeah. your light at all times. For sure. Because if you don't, realistically, you're in Australia where bright and mm -hmm. hot or dark and cold, and so you need yeah. to have. You need to harness that. For sure, for sure. And then just um, making sure that everything that's in that space it aligns with what it is that you want. So for example, okay. like if you have books, you know, yeah. are they like books that you are going to want to read again? Or are they books that kind of represent where you're going in your life, what you want to create? And like that's looking at the library and what you have in your space. I'm a huge fan of like making your house become a vision board for what you're creating. So it's like That's the sign, the books, the images, everything that you have in like your living room, in the spaces that you spend a lot of time. Yes. So for example, like that's why if you do spend a lot of time in your living room, you want to make sure that there's things in it that feel good, but that represent and that inspire you, you. And that inspire you. Yeah. I like it. Mm -hmm. I think one of my living rooms might need a makeover after that. Ah. I'll put that on the Renault show for you to see <laughs> later. Thank you so much, you're Patricia. Welcome. Thank you. stuff in our offices and our studies and traditionally this has been done through filing cabinets so I'm going to be taking on the ultimate challenge to make a filing cabinet look hot enough to live in this current project that we're doing now I have found an old and neglected filing cabinet um, in one of my friends garages and we're going to be making that over one, so we have somewhere to store all the really important paperwork that hasn't yet evolved to being digital. And two, we're going to restore it to make sure that it fits in well in here. And I do love a bit of bling, just a bit of bling. So we're actually going to be creating a gold filing cabinet. It's going to be a bit of a task, but I'm up for the challenge. Now, it's quite a challenge because it is a black filing cabinet. So I've gone to see my friends at Bristol, the paint specialists, and they've advised me of exactly what I need for this. All right team, I'm super excited about the makeover of the filing cabinet. Now it's a bit of a tricky one. I've never made over such a shiny surface before. We're gonna need some standard things like wet and dry sanding pad, stick to mix the paint up. We have to make sure we really do that well. Paintbrush for any cutting in or any drips. Naturally, I'm wanting a really, really smooth finish. So I've gone with a microfiber. It's a UniPro microfiber short nap roller. That should give me a really smooth finish than a stippled one but two absolutely essential products here it's this one is first so this is the white knight rust guard quick dry so not only does it dry in an hour which is outrageous but without this no matter what I pop on top of it isn't going to go really well so this does a couple of things if it was in a, a surface that was prone to rust it, it really prevents it from rusting but most importantly for me with this one is it's going to make sure that whatever I choose to put on top of it is a good stick so great adhesion so it's an amazing primer to use if you're wanting to transform pretty much most metal surfaces so no matter how good my top coat was, if I didn't use this beautiful puppy here, um, my top coat would be mute. Now the team at Bristol have recommended this to me. I went to them and I said, hey guys, I want a metallic gold finish. And so they've given me this system to use together and the top one is actually from Porter's Paints. It is the Alchemy Liquid Gold. So let's see how this goes over the awesome rust guard and um, see what finish we get. Now both of these products, again, always important to check your wash up. Both of these products are a water wash up. Um, this one actually is touch dry in 20 minutes, which is amazing. And you can recoat after an hour, which is awesome. Always remember team that your environment does affect your drying time. So if it's colder, if it's wetter, if it's hotter, if it's drier, it will all affect the drying time. So make sure you take that into account. Now, if I'm gonna be dead honest with you, these haven't turned out exactly as I'd like. They're a little more yellow or mustardy 
than I'd imagined that they would be. And although the can tells me that I need to use a brush for it, it's still come up with quite a streaky look on it. So I figure I've got nothing to lose. I'm gonna give them a third coat now, slight sand back, and I'm actually gonna roll them. Um, and then I'm just gonna see how I feel once it's dry and it's in place in the room. It is feeling a little mustardy at the moment, but I could be completely shocked once I integrate it with the rest of the space and it looks like a beautiful metallic gold. But fear not, this is my theory about paint. You can paint anything. So if I choose in you know a month, in six months, in one week, that I don't like the gold, I can just paint over it. But let me see first if I can salvage this puppy. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. A good shake. This is actually quite a viscous paint. So um, I'm quite intrigued as to how this might turn out if I choose to roll it. A really good stir. Every time we need to give it a good stir. This could be an epic fail of, <laughs> of epic proportions. But yeah, it's a beautiful paint. Okay. Clean tray, clean roller. You all know I was completely unsure about how this would go. I wasn't thrilled at all after the first coat. In fact, I was nearly ready to throw the towel in, but I'm really glad that I didn't because the way it has ended up and with that little bit of glitter and shimmer through that paint, that really metallic edge, it is, um, it's a game changer. Next time on The Reno Show, I will reveal the results of my huge backyard deck transformation. Naturopath Tammy Guest is back to discuss the importance of taking control of your health on the Reno site, and I have a piano DIY you are going to love.